All right there, guys, this is Rob back for another review of sorts and also um, my first response video to Tie Me to Why Me. I was uh, watching this video yesterday and found it very interesting about the auto assembly and the whole back and forth thing with the reviewers talking and the rambling aspect of things. Now, um, I'm good at rambling and I've tried to stop myself from doing it when I'm doing reviews just because I'm worried I might bore people. Also, it's because I'm very new to doing this and still finding my feet and still trying to get my confidence up on camera and get used to talking to a camera for one thing. So, um, I like the idea that we should be uh, sharing and all sorts of other things as well. I really enjoy Wolfgang Wong when he um, talks about all sorts of stuff as well as doing the Transformers reviews and the Strange Corner. I really like um, Exaggerated Elegy and Time to Wind Me as well. All these guys. I miss uh, Mushman69, he was cool too. And it's a lot of these guys that um, brought me to want to start reviewing and the Collect 75 and people like that. So um, I also find uh, Barry Tazari or Thew very entertaining and uh, he's unique. <laughs> How the hell does he do what he does? Amazing. So. Um, I think it'd be good if we uh, shared not only the reviews, but also uh, discuss things like how we'd like to see improvements in the toys, or what it is we miss in the toys and we'd like to see back in them, or maybe even with the regards to the G1 toys, which quite a few of us review and um, remember, which is one of the reasons that I'm here. Um, trying to maybe... Uh, document memories we've got of Transformers and why it meant so much to us because um, I suppose being part of uh, if you were G1 children from the 80s were uh, kind of special in the respect that we were the first of Transformers and it was quite a revolution in toys and in um, cartoons for, for kids in that uh, the story was actually quite adult and in depth and political a lot of social justice in there and to my mind it was really um, different to all the other toys and sorry I'm not toys and um, cartoons out there at the time and it really captured my imagination for that reason and also my mum likes and she used to watch it with me as well and still does this day uh, well she doesn't watch it anymore but she still thinks it's a good thing at least so um, it definitely uh, inspired me not just with music and uh, just a general of the toys, but also politically as well. You know, the sense of right and wrong. That was a good thing about Transformers. It uh, wasn't just about robots fighting for no reason, which sometimes it unfairly gets branded as. Now, um, as you can see, I'm waffling on now. So this is the sort of thing I'm trying to stop myself from doing. But I enjoy people waffling on. However, there is different reviewing styles out there. I know there's some guys who just keep it very much to the toy and some people might appreciate it for that reason. My channel in itself is uh, pretty diverse. I joined up ages ago, without a, years ago, not even with any clue to the social side of YouTube or even with any intention of doing my own videos. Hence my god-awful username, Rob Peter one Man, no, I hate that. I really should change it. And um, YouTube keeps flashing up with this thing to change the username, but I can't think of anything cool to put in or anything that would even suit me, perhaps, you know. So, uh, anyway, um, yeah, memories of uh, Transformers, well, not just uh, what it, it's done for you, because obviously I think Transformers is more than just uh, about the toys for a lot of us, and perhaps a lot of the reviewers might want to discuss more what Transformers has done for them, because I'm sure... It must be an inspiration to people on um, many levels, uh, whether it's writing or art or music or whatever, politics or just uh, anything really. Um, you can find inspiration in many things in many ways and uh, there's a hell of a lot of inspiration in Transformers, that's for sure. But not just that, maybe the memories of uh, how we actually used to play with them. You know, people go about articulation these days, um, which is great. And G1s get levelled as bricks, which is right. But um, 
the imagination we had, I can remember very clearly. I'm lucky I've got a very good memory. But um, I can remember the 80s and I can remember exactly what we used to do at school with them, how we used to play with them at friend's house and um, the imagination that we used to make up imaginary places that we could play with the robots with and articulation was never a problem because uh, you'd just pick up the toy and imagine it was kicking the other robot or whatever you were doing. So that would be about, I was born in 84 but I did grow up pretty quick and uh, can remember about I don't know, it must have been the late 80s. But uh, we had a lot of fun with them. We used to take Transformers to school with us. We used to uh, talk about them. We used to go back to each other's houses after school and we'd be watching the series on the TV and different people had different Transformers. And I can remember one thing was it was very hard to uh, get hold of Transformers in the UK. And um, some of them were impossible to get a hold of. And there were some people who were lucky to go to America for their holiday. And their parents would bring them back all these Transformers that a lot of us like, oh man, where'd you get those from? And uh, funnily enough, I remember somebody mentioning here about a kid at school that reckoned they had Unicron. Well, funnily enough, I can remember that too. There was somebody at our school that reckoned they had Unicron, but it was too big to bring in. So, yeah. That's actually the original G1 Unicron toy that never got released. I really wish they'd released that, because I think it looks pretty damn cool, actually. And also, just the fact that it's uh, G1 and quite nostalgic. It would be cool to see it. So, um, as regards auto-assembly, I've never been to auto-assembly yet. And, um, you know, this YouTube community, I'm really um, interested in getting involved with it, which is why I'm doing these videos as well as being inspired by other people. Transformers has always been a big part of my life, but um, it's always been just that, just part of my life. So discovering YouTube and the uh, the videos has been uh, really good for me because suddenly you feel connected to this uh, bigger community where you can share your love with other people of these things. So um, that's one of the reasons it inspired me to do the videos also to get used to myself being on camera, which is something that I'm still finding quite hard, but it is what it is. So, um, rant videos are good too. Now, I've been thinking about doing those, but uh, I'm not sure I'm ready to do that yet. So, when I get ranting, that can be uh, quite a thing and might uh, cause more trouble than it's worth, to be honest. So, uh, <laughs> I'll leave that. I suppose I could have a one little rant now. Um, in that plastic quality is something that is a bother to me. I'd like to know if um, the newer Transformers are made out of the same kind of plastic, and I'm pretty sure they aren't, as older Transformers, uh, the G1s. Is, um, I noticed, well, got a, one here, this Cyclonus, which I love. This is a fantastic figure. It really is brilliant. Absolutely love it. I've actually got I think I've got all the colours of this, I just love it. Now I wish that they'd do more Transformers like this, what I'd call a G1 anime style. Now um, you get the masterpiece, but we never really had a line that's done G1 as it is in this show, or as close to in this sort of size. Uh, we've got the classics line, which comes very close, but quite often they're deviations and a, a new take on it, which is fine. But um, I think that it'd be there'd be lots of people that'd want to buy the um, you know small figures that are, look very reasonably like the cartoon, like MP10, the new uh, masterpiece Prime, which is awesome. And I got that and the uh, the uh, Hasbro release as well. If they could uh, make a smaller version of that too, that would be fantastic. I reckon I'd buy a load of them. Um, Hot Rod Two is another cool one for me. I'd like to see that. And well, all of them really. All Transformers are good. But my concern is um, there are certain figures that I've had and I don't play with them. I do transform them occasionally and admire them and have a look at them. And it's nice to display them and pose them occasionally, different ones. But they don't get a lot of use. And they do get cared for, they don't get thrown around, they don't get treated harshly. But it's one of the things like your classic Starscream, the nose just decides to break off. 
Um, they'll not even just break off, just fall off. You know, you, you look at it and it goes wrong. After you think, well, the plastic seemed to be very solid on them. I was always very impressed with that figure, but now it makes me frightened of touching my other seekers because I've collected quite a few of them. And you think, when are they going to go wrong? And then um, on from the classics line, some of the plastics seem to get a bit softer and it seems to vary from figure to figure or even within the figure itself, there's different types of plastic being used. And sometimes the build quality is just shocking. It just looks like there's been no care whatsoever, particularly with Reveal the Shield. I noticed there was quite a few stinkers in that line, but um, some good ones too, obviously, but things could have been better. And it's the stress marks you see in these things. There's some figures that have got stress marks right out of the pack, like uh, Dark Mounts. I love that figure from the Generations line, but there is stress marks there. And um, even with this figure I've noticed now, there's um, a stress mark appearing that wasn't there before. Where are we? You might not be able to see it, but where that pin's been pushed in, very slight. Now, I don't think it's going to go. But, um, and it wouldn't put me off buying them at the moment. But then there's things like Masterpiece as well. Uh, Masterpiece Starscream, not the MP11, the original Hasbro one. I've noticed that's got stress marks on it. And that's only been transformed twice and with care. Um, Takara's release of uh, Rodimus Prime I've got the original issue of that which is a great figure but did have a few of uh, problems which I've corrected again I've not used it very much and I picked it up today to notice that something is split on it so I've got G1 Transformers that are nearly as old as me nearly 30 years old some of them are older than me so and uh, they're fine they're exactly as they was made in the 80s. They're still Transformers good. No stress marks, no stress around where the pins have been put in. Uh, they might have a bit of rust on the screws, but I can forgive them that. Uh, they might have discoloured a little bit, but I can forgive them that too. Stickers might have worn, they can be changed. But they were made good, people paid the money for them, and back in the 80s, um, toys were better, and things generally were better, so people would pay money and you would get something of quality in return that would last. Whereas now you pay for something, we've got this throwaway society. And these are sold to collectibles. But I just wonder, you know, do we really get what we pay for now? Probably not. Um, they are undoubtedly good quality toys still. That's a fact. And there's a lot more put into them now, so I suppose there's more to go wrong with them. And the stresses on some of these joints, yeah. There isn't, you've got like about a mill of plastic where one of the pins is shoved in perhaps. And it's not really a lot of plastic to um, be very forgiving of a pin being shoved through it really, is it? So maybe the chunkiness was uh, something that should get back into the toys. Or maybe it's because they're too small. And because they're too small, the, um, the pins therefore overstress the plastic, I don't know. I take it if you was to upscale this figure, example, for example, make it the same size as the G1 toy. Um, it'd probably be a hell of a lot more robust, but maybe not, I don't know. So, my fear is with these, will these toys just crumble to pieces um, in the next few years' time and all the money you spent on them is just gone? Or will they last? I suppose only time will tell. But um, it'd be nice to know from Hasbro do you still use the same quality plastic? How much regrind do you use? Um, with some of the toys, I wouldn't be surprised if it was 100% regrind. But uh, it's nice to see they're getting better now. It's like uh, these the newer generations figures, like this one. Now I've heard everyone saying, yeah, they're smaller and pricey, and the transformations aren't maybe as complicated as they were. Um, but they're still nice, and the one thing I've noticed is the plastic does seem to be better on some of these. I've got this and Shockwave and Jazz. Now, um, Jazz, the plastic seemed good, but it was very thin, that figure. Um, it's not my best one, I don't think it's... Uh, yeah, it's what it is. This one, though, I think is really, really good. Possibly one of the best. 
but the plastic does seem very good and there isn't a single stress mark on this one at all and I've changed this one quite a bit because he's pretty simple so he's fun he's uh, one you can just change back and forth quickly without any problems at all and just enjoy him so yeah I like that it's good and he's got posability and the joints are pretty stiff but um, they just seem to have improved the plastic quality on these whereas the previous ones were possibly more elaborate designs but the plastic quality wasn't as good so maybe that's what we're paying for better plastic less of a transformation and if that's the case then I suppose I can accept that because of the financial crisis and fuel to a degree you know so um, back to auto assembly I've never been before I'm thinking of going it all depends on time work um, money but if I was to go I'd be um, I've never been to any convention before so I'd be very excited to see what goes on there meet new people I'm going to be a bit nervous at first but I'm sure I'd get on fine it'd be great to meet people that's um into the same thing. It'd also be nice to probably pick up some nice figures that I've been looking for. You know, things like uh, headmasters and stuff like that. I don't know what sold there, but uh, stuff like that would be good. I suppose my fears would be probably... Um, <laughs> I'm not sure actually. Uh, maybe... Seeing loads of figures that you want to go afford, that could be <laughs> one, but as for a fear, I don't know, fears. Maybe, um, no, actually I can't think of anything to be frightened of. Why be frightened of a Transformers convention? Could only be a good thing, right? <laughs> so, um, I guess I better get to review anyway. So, I'll review this uh, Cyclonus. Just have to do this a second. The phone's telling me it's got a low battery. There we go. This figure is absolutely fantastic. Now, um, this is the original Universe 2.0 release, and he's in a very, very dark purple. It often comes across as being black, but it, or brownie, on camera. But he is a lovely shade of purple, and that, that really pleases me. I love the very cartoon accurate sculpting of it. The transformation is fun. The light piping is amazing. I also like that it's sort of a bit like the comic colours and a bit like the old toy. So that's pretty cool. And I'll just quickly go through the transformation. Which you've seen loads of times before. But uh, it's cool how these legs split apart into two pieces. Then, uh, got the little target master. There you go. It's funny though how he's only got um, a hole in this hand and not in the other one. That's something that I keep looking at and thinking, should I get the Dremel out? It's uh, also cool how this figure can connect into the hand here. There you go. Options are always a good thing. The, these wings clip in like that. It's a cool design. I think of all the classics uh, Universe, RTS, HTFD, all the blooming lines that you can think of. Uh, this one is um, one of my favourites. And that's mainly because he's so damn close to the G1 cartoon. And. Uh, I remember the G1 toys, a lot of them were based on the comic design rather than the uh, cartoon. But that is a fantastic alt mode. Really successful. It's a bit gappy, but yeah, it's supposed to be a pretty big spaceship, so I think yeah, that was cool. And of course, this little insecty thing, because some people think maybe it's, was it Bombshell or Shrapnel? I can't remember. Or Skywarp. I always thought, took it as the one at the front would be Skywarp and the one at the back would be Bombshell. I think that's how it was. And um, that whole thing about the Armada, that's a cool idea. So uh, maybe you could say if it's Skywarp because he could teleport, maybe there's loads of Cyclonuses that can teleport in at any one time. And yeah, he just shows himself when he needs to, so I don't know. Could be something like that. 
But uh, you've got these little wheels here. Pop them down. Sorry, doing that off camera. Just cool so you can land it. And uh, this guy can go on the top. Nice stick. Which is pretty cool. And there it works. I'd definitely say put this guy up, and I'm sure most of you already have anyway. But uh, I was reviewing it because I really like this figure. The plastic is good. And there's that dude, and he's got a little bit of articulation in the arms. So, uh, this is a very tired review, by the way. I'm doing this late at night. So, um, as I did the other night for that masterpiece one, maybe I should uh, try and wake up a bit. But I find I gabble on more when I'm uh, knackered. And if you want a gabbly review, then this is a gabbly review. Sorry, not gabbly, rambling. There you go. So, um, yeah. I was going to review this as well, but I think it's going to be late now. I'll probably save this for tomorrow. But uh, this is my uh, commemorative free issue style screen, which has hardly been used at all, really. It hasn't even got all the stickers on yet. And that's a lovely piece of plastic. <laughs> and that one. The wings uh, seem to be a bit funny. They fall off easy. Uh, so there we go. Um, I'm new to this reviewing business and I'm new to uh, this kind of thing where I'm, this is probably more, well it is my first uh, vlog type video. So I hope I haven't bored anybody, but uh, if anybody else would like to um, comment or give me some pointers or tell me if they like what I'm doing or if they uh, want to make a new quest out for anything, then please do. Please subscribe and uh, yeah, maybe... Um, we should do another round of that uh, Get to Know a Transformers fan, which I see a few people have done, and maybe I should do that too. Uh, my channel also features some videos about other things that have been interesting, but it's predominantly going to be Transformers. So and I might shift across some of those videos to another channel, I don't know. But uh, still, it's good to be diverse, I suppose. And there's been some, I've put some music videos up too, because Transformers, the music thing, has been a big inspiration to me, and will continue to be forever. Vince Cola, he rocks. So, uh, anyway, I think I'll leave it there, guys, and I'm uh, probably going to watch this back and think, ah, I should have put this in, that in, and the other. But then I guess if you want to have a back and forth thing, then maybe we can do that in the next video if you want to reply to this. Um, it'd be good to see some of those old reviewers come back, you know, uh, all the ones that have uh, not done a video for a while. I don't know if they I haven't checked up because I've been away for myself myself quite a bit so uh, I keep coming in and going out too um, even though I'm new to it but I'll Cal Al Prime and uh, Diancis and uh, I don't know where Moshman 69 is but uh, I really wish you'd come back because your videos are cool man. so definitely an inspiration to do this very good collection too so um, yeah thanks very much guys and uh, see you soon